Hello and welcome to this video, in which I would like to exchange some lifetime with knowledge again. I would like to show you in this video how we can make a material transfer. This means how we can make a motif appear in a picture as if it had been made from another material. And in our example, we will see how we will make a tiger made of porcelain tiger and other materials. But we will now go from the very front with a blank comfy UI to the workflow. So, first of all, we take an image that we want to use. And then I decided on this tiger here. This works quite well as an example. Of course, this also works with other motifs. I also took a hamster and it worked. So we take this tiger. So what we need now is this picture is relatively small. I'll just do open image. Here we see 500 by 750. We want to use SDXL later on. That's why I want to have that a little bit bigger. I take a resolution by aspect ratio for that, which determines the side ratio and then gives us the corresponding sizes for SDXL. Then we take an image scale to enlarge the image so that it is suitable for SDXL. I say scale to. I convert it to input. We take the width here. We take the picture from the front. And we say here we want to scale the width. So we push the whole picture to SDXL adapted dimensions. So what do we need now? To do the whole thing, we first need a depth map, i.e. a depth mask. I take Zoe anything or Zoe depth map. We can also take that. That doesn't really matter. We take this one. Then we can look at the picture up here later. What comes out of it? We can actually do that now. By the way, if you don't know the view down here yet, it's new. It came with one of the last Comfy updates. Then go into the settings of your Comfy UI. And up here you can see under beta whether you want the bar up here, down here, or disabled. Then you come back to the old view. I to bottom now. So just you're not surprised. This is our depth map, our depth mask. We will continue to work with it in a moment. What we will also need is a remove background node. And then I take the image remove background from the essentials. Let's see how we can best organize this. I'll pull it up here. We take the depth map down here, hang the picture here. We take a remove background session. And just stay with general purpose. That's fine and hang the picture in here too. Now we get it here too. We can take a look at that too. We get the background removed here now. And at the same time we get a mask. And if we take a look at it and I don't get lost all the time. So I have the microphone in front of a snout. That's why I sometimes hit next to it. Here we see there was a beautifully cut tiger. For later processing. So these are the two prerequisites that we need up here. And let's continue with the workflow down here. First of all, of course, we need a load checkpoint. Then we take SDXL. And I take Proters. How the material will look later depends a bit on the checkpoint. But Proters is a very kind checkpoint. That's why we take it now. We take two prompting nodes. Up here I write tiger made of something. High detail, intricate. Sharp focus and OK. And down here we write text, watermark and blurry. I can save the others because we make a tiger here. Should actually nothing dangerous happen. I push all the nodes a few pieces down. So, and a moment please. I forgot to turn on my shortcut display program. I do that now. Furthermore, of course, we need a sampler for later. We can also set it up now. I'll go in with seed 5. Fixed steps, we say 30, because we still need an IPA. It always needs a little more steps. So everything set up. We don't connect the here yet. But we can pull the model over here. The latent image, we don't connect that either. Because we're doing an in-painting. We want to replace this tiger with a porcelain tiger later. That's why we're going to do an in-painting. So that would be roughly the workflow prepared. Back here we can already take a VAED code. 
and a safe image. Material transfer. So, a safe node. Of course, we need a VAE from up here. I can pull that back here. Although here we will need it right away. Spoiler, that's why I do it like this. Not search. And hang them up here. Now it's a bit clear. Well, to apply our depth map up here. Of course, we'll need a control net first. And for that I take a control net advanced. So now we can put our conditions in here. We load our control net in here. And we need a depth control net from SDXL. And we need an image. And of course, we take the image from our depth map. Now we could of course connect here. But I just said we're doing an in-painting. To replace the tiger, that's why we're going to need an in-painting node at this point. And then I take in-paint model conditioning. And here we can already see, here are also positive and negative. That means we connect them through here once. And from there they go into the sampler. And we can also take out the latent here. By the way, here we need a la VAE, which I just said. We can just pull them up here. We need the image that we want to in-paint. That would be the one from up here. After the scale image to side node. That's the scaled image. We want to in-paint that, and we need a mask. Then we take the one from the remove background. And what the whole thing is going to do now is. It will use the mask that I just showed you. To only Dino is the area of the tiger. And the west stays as it is. It's just an in-painting. Very classic in painting. Now we need an IP adapter. And there we take the IP adapter style in composition. No, the precise style transfer. I was looking for it. So now we can put a unified loader in here. I take the plus model with a high strength. I'll push the whole thing over a little bit. So that we have a little more space here. Always clean up a bit so that the whole thing remains understandable. We connect the model over here. Classic setup. And now we can already connect our model from here to the sampler. I just did that wrong again. I connected it directly over here, but we have to go through the IP. Doesn't matter. You can change everything again. Here we need a load image node, namely to save the IP adapter, which style we want. And there I have already prepared a few pictures here. I can't load them now because they're in a subfolder. Why I do show you later. I'll just drag that in here by drag and drop. We'll take porcelain now. And then we can go into the prompt at the top and say made of porcelain. So. Well, that looks pretty good. I'm just thinking. We still have to adjust the weights here. We go down here to 0 0.7. And with the style boost we go up to 2. I also talked about everything in the last video. Where we looked at all these nodes here. We also used them in the last video. We now use them for style transfer precise. And I think the whole thing should work that way. I'll just press start and we'll take a look at it. So we take the picture, create a depth map out of it. A deep information card, so to speak. We remove the background. We just saw that only the tiger remains. The background stays away. We take the mast because only the tiger remains. We now tell the sampler that he should only repaint the area of the tiger through the in-painting. Give for this area here these deep information with pure. We see that it is whiter than back there. That means the head of a tiger is further ahead. And by the IPA down here we give the style of the material through the picture and support the whole thing through our prompting here at the point. And I'll let the whole thing run now. So and there we go. And there we are done. We'll take a look at the whole thing. I'll just make it a little bigger here. So we see now that we got a tiger out of porcelain here. Good ore has worked very, very well. But we also see that they have developed a bit ugly edges here with the mask. We can easily counteract that by hanging a grow mask on top of it. So it doesn't have to be that big. We switch between our image remove background and the in-painting model conditioning. 
and say now we want to enlarge the mask by about 12 pixels. I'll let the whole thing run again. And as we can see, the edges have become much nicer. All good. So what we could still do now is we could put a new IP adapter down here as an image negative. Let's do that. Say shuffle. Say 0.8 strength and 2 blur. We also talked about that in the last video. So we don't have to start over. Then we'll see the next generations. And in principle, the whole thing is already working pretty well, as you can see. We can now add another thing. I'm going to make a little more space here. We can if we switch a comparer node in between or before. And now say we want to compare our original image with our original image. I'll pull that up here. That's a little bigger. Then you can sometimes see, yes, here too, that the proportions of the tiger don't quite fit. So we have the area of the tiger very nicely filled with a porcelain tiger now. However, the face is still different. And to support that a bit, we can actually add a second control net here. I copy this apply control net node once. We'll hang it in between. So and so. Say here as control net, we want to have canny. SDXL canny. And we'll take a canny node up here as a preprocessor. And here we also need our scaled image and take this image as a template for our canny control net. If I run that again now, then we see, of course, something has changed here. We somehow got white porcelain now. The blue has turned red. I don't know why. But we see that the face of the tiger now holds more to the original. It's an option. You don't have to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to, control B, bypass, then the whole thing is not used. But that's how you get a little closer to the original image, to the proportions of our tiger. So, and we can do that now with other materials. If I take my templates here again, and I say here, for example, I want to take fire now, then I hang this down here, go into the prompting, don't say porcelain anymore, but of course fire. Start the whole thing. Then we can see now that we have received a more or less fiery tiger here. How the whole thing looks like later is up to the model. I've already said that you can control that. But in principle it works that way. Now I would like to show you briefly at the end how to or why I have stored this material here. I also made it a bit automated. We'll go through that again now. And that's pretty simple in principle. I take a load image node from folder, so load image from folder. Hang an integer in here at the front. That's all from the comfy UI YANCs. This is my own node suite. Say increment here. So now we get a file name out of here. I can say materials here as a folder name. This is the folder name that I also have here for my input folder. It is in the input folder of Comfy UI. I have created a folder called materials. And in the folder itself, as you can see, the images are already named as the materials that can be seen on it. So porcelain, wood, meat, marble, fire and flames. So we can go there now. And say text replace. We get something like porcelain.jpg out of here. That means we want to find jpeg there and replace it by nothing. We'll do that. What remains would only be porcelain in our case. Now we can pull that a little further forward here. Now we do the following. We take a text node. A normal text node. Copy the positive prompt over here. And write up here instead of a tiger made of fire, a tiger made of material. Oops, I came to caps lock. Material. Now we have porcelain down here. Now porcelain comes out. And up here we get our prompt. Now we take another replace node here. Text replace. And say we want to find the word material here. From this text. 
we want to find this word here. And we want to replace the whole thing by what we get out of down here. Now we can go here and say clip text encode. Convert text to input. We hang the text in here, can make the nodes a little smaller. And what the whole construct does now, so not yet, but soon, and that's exactly now. We can throw that away. Is. It takes a node from the folder materials. This picture. We now send it into the IPA. That means it picks this picture first. Then this picture. This picture. This picture. Then this picture. You can stay on increment. Here at the point. Because as soon as the node recognizes. Okay. There are no more pictures. Swings it back to the first. And goes through the line again from the front. You also get information presented in the console. So from the file. Let's take the .jpg away. By replacing nothing. We take our prompt, the tiger made of material, then replace the word material with the appropriate term, which we get from our image name, and send it in as prompting. If I run the whole thing now, then we see that we again our, I can remove the node up there, that we have received our fire tiger again. I can also have the overview part down here, also add a preview image node. If I run the whole thing again, we see that we now get marble here. Then the whole thing is once generated with marble. And so we can do the whole thing. Let it run further until we all pictures once have done. And in the end, then also this meaty tiger. I'll spare the others. The principle will remain the same. You must have understood what I meant here. But of course, you can also. A similar construct then up here, to load your original pictures. Then he writes in here. Tiger, hamster, cat, dog, however they are named. The pictures. According to their content. And then you can, for example, say, animal made of material, would not go with an animal. Because that would not always fit. You have to look, but theoretically it would be possible. That means you can theoretically also, yes. Take a material, and then replace different motifs. Or as in the case, now here a motif, and with different materials. Just let it run through. And that's the whole secret, behind the material, transfer. Can you we have now in the case not really used. But it makes sense if you want to convert closer faces, or something like that, because here it is actually quite clear, in the depth map, how the shape of our tiger is. We still have to think about it, combined with the mask, so only here the tiger is used, but if you are now a portrait of someone, or something that is generally very close, then you have mainly white as a face and black as a background. Because the background, of course, compared to the foreground, very far away. Therefore, the option with Kani is also available to support the sampler to grab under the arms. Yes, that was it. Have fun experimenting around yourself. I will give you the workflow, as you can see now. Save and make available. Of course, the link is below in the description. We'll see you in the next video. Take care until then. Bye.